Okay. And let's kick off then. So, hey, uh, dear Nordic friends and friends of Nordics, uh, welcome to our Smart Cities Virtual Market Entry Program Stakeholder Introduction Event. Uh, my name is Sami Askelainen, I'm from Nordic Innovation House, and I'll be your host today. Uh, so it is my great pleasure to warmly welcome you all to our event today. And uh, before we start, a uh, few words regarding the house rules as usual. Uh, please note that all the participants are automatically muted. We will have a QA session at the end, so you can ask them questions uh, by posting those in the chat. And please also remember then to indicate to which speaker your question is for. And uh, please also note that this session will be recorded and we will share the information package with all the participants after the event, including all the presentation decks and, uh, and the videos. Great, but let's start then. So uh, today we are very, very delighted to have a two uh, very important digital district uh, stakeholders with us. So JTC, which is the main developer of the area, and then we also have ST Engineering. Uh, from JTC, we have uh, Yihan Ni, who is a project manager uh, in the smart district uh, area. And then ST Engineering is represented by uh, Rohit Gupta, who is the vice president of marketing. And uh, both gentlemen will share with us today uh, what kind of solutions their organizations are looking for uh, at the Pungo Vista district and what kind of opportunities there might be then for the Nordic smart city companies from the various fields such as smart buildings, smart infrastructure, uh, smart utilities, smart mobility, IoT, big data and uh, many, many more. Uh, both JTC and ST Engineering are also very uh, significant players, uh, not only in Singapore, but also in Southeast Asia. Uh, so hopefully we can touch uh, a little bit also with the, with the regional aspect today uh, a bit. Uh, but before we hand over the stage to Jihan and, and Rohit, uh, me and Markus Kuusinen from Business Sweden, uh, we will provide you uh, a little bit more background and information about Nordic Innovation House and also then our Smart Cities virtual uh, market entry program that will take place in October. So uh, Nordic Innovation House is a community platform uh, accelerating high quality Nordic tech startups, scale-ups and growth companies which are coming to Singapore and of course many of them are, are using Singapore as a springboard then for the, the rest of the Southeast Asia markets. Uh, we basically like uh, one of the key functions how we are supporting companies is really to connect them with the right ecosystem stakeholders here in Singapore and uh, we are joint collaboration between the Nordic countries and in Singapore, our team consists of people from uh, Business Sweden, Innovation Norway, Business Embassy, and Promote Iceland. And we also supported by the uh, Nordic Council of Ministers and Nordic Innovation. Uh, we have currently 47 members uh, in Singapore coming from multiple different verticals. And we are working with those companies on a daily basis. But uh, then we also have a very clear focus on specific verticals with our programs. Uh, such as Nordic Health, Sustainability and Impact, and Smart Cities. And uh, as a part of all these uh, teams, we are running these market entry programs. And uh, of course, these are providing really good opportunities for Nordic companies to, to meet the relevant stakeholders uh, in Singapore and also understand that what kind of solutions they are looking for. So it's an excellent way to start building your foundations uh, here in Singapore. And then our Smart Cities Virtual Market Entry Program will take place in October, like I mentioned. And uh, now I'm going to hand over then to Markus Kuusinen from Business Sweden. Uh, he will share more details about that. So, Markus, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Sami. So, yeah, so I will share a little bit more about uh, uh, the Smart City Program that we'll be running now in, uh, in, in October, which this is kind of a preparation session for. Uh, so if we move into a little bit the, 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 the program overview, what we are trying to achieve with this Smart City program. Uh, so, is it, uh, so the phase that we are in now is to provide kind of an, uh, an overview of what are the opportunities here in, in, in Singapore and in Southeast Asia for, for startups back in, uh, in, in the Nordics uh, that, are, that are looking into kind of expanding into this region. Uh, so this is one of the sessions where we have 
two of the the, the larger players uh, within this space here in uh, in Singapore today, with JTC and uh, and Est Engineering, to share about how they are working with smart cities and what opportunities uh, that we can see for for Nor for Nordic startups. Uh, so if you look into kind of the the program overview that will uh, happen, then so what so what will the program be about? So that will be focused on kind of for for Nordic startups to be able to showcase. Uh, kind of the different solutions and products that they have and how that can fit into kind of the, the ecosystem that we have here down here in uh, uh, in Southeast Asia. So that will be, so the program will involve uh, everything from meet with kind of potential clients, uh, partners, uh, but also to meet with uh, investors, incubators, etc. to really kind of uh, get an understanding of, of how is the situation down here and what are kind of the business opportunities for your specific uh, startup. Uh, so this will, uh, I will come back in a, in a couple of slides, a little bit more details about the program and how they will actually be set up. But the goal is really to kind of during, during this program that we will we'll have, it's really to get an understanding of are there any kind of specific uh, business opportunities for your specific startup. And, and hopefully what, what we would like to have is, of course, for if you're not present down in the region today, that you can expand down to, to Southeast Asia. Uh, and also something that will be included in the program uh, is as uh, Sami mentioned, we have today 47 uh, members, uh, so Nordic Innovation House uh, uh, membership, uh, which we can share more details about uh, at a later stage if somebody interesting exactly what will be included and how we can support you. Um, so if we move on uh, to, to the next one, uh, so if we look into kind of the concept, how we set up this program, we look at that kind of in, in, in two ways. Uh, so of course, what we would like to have is really we would like to bring bring uh, the, the the best and the and the most kind of advanced startups from from the Nordics uh, down down to Singapore. And and as you know, with the COVID nineteen situation, it, it will be a little bit difficult to do it uh, physically here in uh, in in Singapore. So it's this year uh, it will be a virtual program. So what we are doing now in the current phase that we are in is to collect kind of what are kind of the problem statements that we see down here in, uh, uh, in, in the region which focus on uh, from in Singapore. So we are, are having discussions with uh, private companies, government agencies, investors, uh, academia, et cetera. And, and the reason we're having that is of course, we would like to gather as much as information as possible. Uh, so we really can kind of bring the companies that uh, have a kind of solution that can solve these kind of problem statements that we, uh, that we see down here in the, in the region. So if we move on to the to the next one, I can uh, share a little bit more about uh, the the phases that we see in front of us. So as we see it up until the program that we will have in October, there are three phases. Uh, and the first phase is the one that we are in now. Uh, and that's really about, we would like to share kind of insights and information with all the startups back, back home in the Nordics. So you can understand what, what is going on down here. What's the opportunities for, for my company? Uh, and that's really to provide you as, as much insights as possible before you make a make a choice if you would like to participate or not there uh, in in the program. And this phase will continue now until uh, end of uh, July. So this will be the first session that we are having today. There will be more sessions coming up uh, where we will provide you with more insights and information with uh, with other stakeholders as well. We will get back to you with more information when uh, when we have scheduled those. Uh, the next phase that will be kind of initiated in, in August is for the companies that have uh, made, made a choice kind of to participate in the, in the program is to onboard and prepare them. So we will have uh, many sessions in kind of preparing the companies in, in understanding the specific business opportunities for, for, for the companies that are participating and, uh, and, and opportunities, etc. And that would be both in uh, kind of us that are based here down in, in the region coaching you. Uh, but also interacting with uh, uh, other external stakeholders as well. But then, of course, the final thing uh, will be the, the virtual program that we will be organizing in, uh, in October. That will be two weeks. But I'll come back to that soon with uh, uh, the program. So if we move on and look at the, the, the timeline uh, that we are, uh, so you understand a little bit where we are. Uh, so from this year, then, January to April, we have been kind of preparing uh, we have been interacting with uh, the respective kind of Singapore stakeholders that uh, we believe uh, would be the the, uh, the most interesting interesting ones, and to gather 
uh, the, the problem statements, etc. Uh, so the phase that we are in now, then May to July, is to have these uh, seminars and sessions. Uh, then end of July, it will be kind of the end of the application date for for all the startups that would like to participate in the in the program. Uh, and then in August, we will announce which companies that will actually be part part of the program. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, we will continue with the preparation in uh, in August and September, and then in October we will have the actual uh, virtual program. So if we move into uh, the setup for, for the program, this is very high level uh, at the moment, but yes, yes, you get a, a sense of it. So uh, as you know, the, there are some uh, time zone differences. So this is uh, Singapore time. Um, so it will be in the afternoon in the Singapore town down here, but it will be in the morning time for you back uh, in the home in the, in the Nordics. But so in brief, the first week will be all about kind of group uh, showcasing, hearing the, the stories and opportunities for the, for the various uh, Singapore stakeholders that, uh, that we have been interacting with uh, now and in the last, uh, last months. Uh, so that will be the focus for, for the first week to really get the, an understanding and the overview. And then the second week will be to pitch individually for, for the various stakeholders and, and hopefully find uh, what we would like to see, of course, is the uh, pilots and, uh, and other uh, collaborations and, and hopefully in, in the end uh, have actual products and solutions sold out there uh, uh, to, to the region. Uh, so if you move on to the, to the next one, the, this is just an example of the stakeholders that we have been uh, having dialogues with here in, in Singapore and that we believe are, are, are very interesting. Uh, and we have two of them here in the call today, so JTC and SST Engineering. Uh, which are the two of the most like prominent uh, players here in, uh, in Singapore and, and throughout uh, the, the region when it comes to the, the smart city development. So I think it will be a very interesting session to hear more about Pungal Digital District, which is one of the larger smart city expansions uh, that, that you see here. Uh, but then, of course, the other uh, government uh, players uh, uh, and other private companies, etc., that we have been interacting with. And, that we foresee that will be included in the in the program here in uh, in in October. Uh, so, so how do you uh, apply for the program? Uh, in the in the uh, slides that will be sent out to you uh, after this session, there will be a link where you will find more information about how you sign up for the uh, for the program. As I mentioned, the end date will be uh, last of uh, July. Uh, so there you will find even more information uh, about the program. Uh, and uh, to, uh, if you have any questions, uh, so the, uh, on the next slide here, we, uh, you, have, you will also have the contact details to your respective uh, uh, country members that we have. So for, for, Norton, for, uh, for Sweden, it will be my, myself, uh, the representative of Business Sweden in the Nordic Innovation House. Uh, for uh, Innovation Norway, it, it will be uh, Paul here or uh, Per Krister. So we will also provide contact details to Per Krister as well. Uh, for, for Embassy of Finland will be Riku and for Embassy of Iceland, it will be Haldor uh, and also, of course, Sami that is on this call as well. So please uh, reach out to any of your respective uh, country members if you have any more questions and would like to have more information about it. But yeah, we're looking forward to have us as many of you uh, startups that are participating today on board on the on the program in uh, in October. So yeah, I hand over back to you, uh, Sami. Okay, great. Thank you, Marcus. And uh, and also we can uh, try to tackle some of those questions today uh, at the end of end of the session. But like I said, more more information will be available on, uh, later on. All right. Uh, next, then I'm gonna basically hand over. Uh, then to the uh, uh, to our next speaker, so Jihan uh, from JTC, and like mentioned, Jihan is the, uh, the project manager at Smart Smart District, and uh, basically you can start just by share your slides, and the uh, stage is yours. All right, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thanks for having me, Sammy and Marcus. Uh, it's it's great to be able to present to a group of uh, Nordic companies uh, our new project, uh, Pongo Digital District, or in short, PDD. So uh, my name is Ihan. Basically, I'm I work with Ryan. Hi everyone. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, 
we are, we are in a uh, JDZ corporation, which is basically a government agency. I'll just share shortly what we do. Yeah, so uh, JDZ corporation is actually a government agency under the Singapore Ministry of Trade and Industry. Uh, what the ministry does is to drive economic development for the whole of Singapore through various uh, government agencies with very specific mandates. Uh, I'm not sure how familiar uh, the companies here uh, today are, are with the uh, Singapore scene, but basically I think EDV will be, will be the most prominent agency that you guys would have interacted with and how it generally works is EDV uh, works with foreign companies uh, to, to drive and promote uh, economic investment into Singapore. And what JTC does is that we are an agency uh, focused on the infrastructure development and the building development for things like business parks, factories, and uh, other supporting facilities that would help all these companies come into Singapore uh, to, to do either R&D or, or manufacturing. So just a brief overview of uh, JTC's portfolio across uh, the entire Singapore. Uh, JTC, of course, the J stands for Jurong. Uh, our government agency first started building uh, factories in Jurong, but over the course of many, many years, we have expanded across the whole of Singapore. And uh, if you can see, Pongo, Digi Pongo Digital District PDD is in the Northeast. And just to highlight again, the spectrum of different, uh, you know, building typologies that KDC does dabble with. On the top left, you can see uh, low-rise factories. These are some of the more early uh, low-tech factories that we have. But across the years, we've built up things like aerospace facilities uh, surrounding the Salita Airport. We have chemical refineries and chemical plants on Jurong Island. Uh, I think One North will be something that is very familiar with uh, the international audience. One North is where we house many of our latest tech and engineering companies and startups. And of course, we have other things like food manufacturing and central kitchen. Singapore. So uh, JDC's portfolio across Singapore, uh, where we build buildings, uh, is very, very diverse. Uh, but of course, as we enter into the, uh, you know, where technology is com coming into crossroads with uh, uh, infrastructure and building development, we are looking to start building things uh, like smart cities, which is why we're here today. So PDD is actually positioned as one of uh, Singapore and JDC's uh, up and coming uh, marquee smart city developments. And I'll just share a bit uh, about this in the next few slides. So PDD I've shared is in the Northeast. Uh, as part of Singapore's uh, decentralization strategy, basically it's, we don't want to keep having more and more offices and buildings inside the central business district. So what Singapore is slowly trying to do is uh, bring more employment uh, uh, centers or offices to the other parts of Singapore so that the density can be spread out across the island more. And through this process of uh, developing what we call poly centers, we are actually positioning each uh, business park or each business district to have a different uh, unique characteristic. So for the case of PDD, we're actually trying to focus in uh, focus on an economic cluster of companies and startups that are focused in the digital and cybersecurity space. So we think that this is a new, new place where we can attract companies that are in the tech scene, cybersecurity, uh, perhaps fintech or digital design. These are the kind of companies that we are hoping to put together in PDD to create a, a new digital uh, ecosystem. And of course, on top of building this new ecosystem, we are looking at things like you know, sustainability using tech and how to use tech to better optimize uh, our, our operations. I'll go into that a bit in the, uh, in the next few slides. But PDD uh, at a very high level, uh, it's about a 50 hectares development. Uh, we plan to introduce uh, enough building space for companies to bring about 28,000 new jobs. And one of the key features of this business park is actually its coexistence or co-location with the new campus of the Singapore Institute of Technology. So that's one of the universities uh, in Singapore, SIT. And uh, over the years, we have figured out that actually to create a vibrant uh, industrial ecosystem, we do need to bring in uh, not just the industry players like startups and, and companies or, or venture capital, but we also need to bring in acad academics. So in this case, JDC has partnered with SIT to uh, co-locate in this new business park to create new opportunities. And as you can see on the right side, those are the four key uh, uh, goals that JDC does look to when we build a new business park or what we call a next generation business park. So work, of course, is the, the key focus of a business park. But of course, we are looking to expand into things like uh, residential or the live component, play, uh, things like recreation or entertainment, and of course, learn, learn being uh, 
this is uh, anchored by the SIT and their degree programs. So just a few uh, you know, artist impressions of this new district. Uh, just to share, this district is currently targeted to complete uh, construction sometime in 2023-2024. Uh, this is the campus boulevard. What it is is actually a 800 meter pedestrianized walkway in between the JTC and SIT uh, uh, buildings. This allows people to interact and mingle in a, in a very safe environment without vehicles. And of course, this uh, uh, provides uh, access to the various entertainment and recreational components in PDD. Market Village, this is a, a section of PDD that is actually located along the waterfront, uh, a reservoir uh, as what we call in Singapore. And this is where some of the community activities and outdoor activities will be uh, uh, organized. Heritage Trail, this is actually uh, an existing vehicle road uh, in PDD. And uh, what we're doing is we're going to pedestrianize it, uh, removing all the uh, cars from it, and keeping all the heritage trees on the left and right of the park to create a very natural and seamless access point uh, from PDD to other, uh, other areas surrounding PDD. And so uh, in our next generation uh, uh, districts, uh, one of the things that uh, the Singapore government is actually exploring is uh, what we call uh, exchange of space or space swap. Uh, how, this work actually, how this works actually is JTC's, uh, some of JTC's facilities will be placed within SIT's buildings and some of SIT's lecture rooms or seminar rooms will be placed within JDC's buildings. So what this swap of space seeks to achieve is actually we want to introduce more uh, chance uh, uh, encounters or, or chance collaboration opportunities between uh, members of industry and members of academia. So what we foresee is we hope that uh, people like professors or students could uh, encounter and maybe interact more with companies that perhaps have a research project that they would like to work on and then more, more of such collaborations can occur within PDD. And this is how we build, uh, or how we hope to build the ecosystem. So on the right, you can see that we plan to do a lot of uh, things such as the learning hubs, startup spaces, co-working and co-living spaces to create not just a work environment, but a, uh, a community environment as well. And so of course, when it comes to uh, next generation smart districts, uh, we need to talk about the smart technologies that we hope to put inside this district as well. So there are, uh, uh, how would you say, there are two facets in which JDC we use technology. Number one, it's how do we use technology to improve JTC's own uh, operation and maintenance of the building. So for example, because JDC builds these buildings, we are the landlord, we maintain them. There are a lot of things to go into like cleaning, hygiene, maintaining things like air conditioning, uh, lift and escalator systems. The second thing is of course, how to use technology to improve the user experience of the people who work, live, play, and learn in PDD. So uh, coming from these two aspects, uh, this slide here shares actually some of the high level uh, thoughts that JDC has in terms of what we need to put into a next generation smart district like PDD in order to make it smart. So uh, things like smart lighting, video analytics, in robots, uh, smart toilets. I think these are things that you would have seen uh, one or the other in uh, other smart city developments around the world. But JDC is trying to put uh, a whole lot of them together from day one into the smart district and build it from the ground up. Now, actually, one of the struggles that JDC has when it comes to integrating all these smart technologies is the problem of interoperability. So what JDC has actually done is we have also, sorry, I think my slides are, yep, there we go. So what JDC has actually done is we have uh, conceptualized what we call an open digital platform. And uh, in, in contrast to how you know, other smart, de uh, smart city developments may have uh, been developed, we are actually creating a platform to allow different technologies to interoperate and be able to communicate and share data with each other. So from a smart city perspective, one of the things that we actually realize is a lot of systems that we put in today uh, fail to talk to each other. And when they fail to talk to each other, there is a lot of a lost opportunity in terms of sharing information between systems or optimizing your system at a very high level. Uh, but JTC has conceptualized this open digital platform to allow for synergies between different uh, uh, smart city technologies to allow this interoperability to happen. 
So one of the examples is, for example, how do you get your, your, your security, your office security access system to interoperate with your lift system? So with the ODP, we hope that actually when uh, you walk through these uh, facial recognition access uh, control uh, gates at the lobby of your office building, it will then share the information with, your, with the lift to have the lift automatically come down, open for you, and send you uh, up to your, your office floor without having you to even touch anything. And perhaps this you know, touch-free uh, sort of concept is more important now given the current you know, uh, health environment that we are with COVID-19. So uh, with technology, we can accept, achieve such things. And uh, this is the thing where we want to break down the, the individual technology barriers and to interoperate them with the uh, open digital platform. And so you could say that this open digital platform is like the central brain of uh, the, the, the smart district or the smart city. And this will allow us, JDC as a landlord, to operate uh, all the systems from one uh, location, but also allow uh, the technology that improves the user experience to all share the same data through the same platform. And the other thing that we are also building as part of this smart uh, district development is what we call a digital twin. So previously, the ODP interconnects all the building systems and pulls all the data into one uh, central location. But then as a building owner, JDC, as a smart city owner, how do you then use this data to, uh, how do you visualize this data? And how do you use this data to then run your daily operations? So this digital twin here is actually uh, part of the solution to that. What we're trying to do here is to create a 3D uh, virtualized environment of the entire district, including modeling all our buildings, all our, our building systems, and then uh, be able to then use simulation technology to then uh, change certain parameters, optimize it, and then bring the new uh, information and insights into the live environment. So you can see that we, uh, our digital twin is actually uh, comprised of a live environment and a virtual environment. And what this allows us to do is to then run operations day to day in the live environment, but also have ongoing optimization and uh, testing and, and uh, uh, validation of certain assumptions in the virtual environment before we bring it to the live environment. So the challenge here is really to then, uh, you know, how do you, uh, how do you create the simulations and how do you recreate all the, the relationships between different building systems? And that's what JDC is trying to do uh, with the digital twin. Uh, it's still, uh, I would say it's still work in progress, uh, but of course, We'd be happy to hear you know what are some of the different options available in the market and with all these smart things uh, in the, the in pdd some of the key outcomes for our district of course number one is being able to operate efficiently uh, that's what the landlord as jdc the landlord we want to drive down cost of maintenance cost of operations and reduce the amount of manpower required to maintain and operate our buildings uh, the secondly of, of course we also want resilient infrastructure how do you use technology to ensure that, you know, even, even if one building system is down, how do you use another building system to come in, to take over and continue to run it without any interruption? And um, lastly, uh, sorry, third, we have improved user experience. I shared uh, previously, we, how do you use technology to create a touch-free or frictionless experience for people coming into work, live, uh, play or learn within PDD? And uh, lastly, uh, collaborative innovation. So, one of the things about collecting all this data in a smart district is, of course, a JDC ourselves, uh, we may not have the capacity to analyze or find certain trends uh, in the district ourselves. So what we want to do is actually share all this information with uh, uh, academics, startups, and companies. You know, perhaps they can look at it from another angle and help JDC uh, improve our processes, or perhaps even do things like uh, sharing of uh, the data re regarding uh, on how people walk around or how people uh, hold activities within the district. Using that data, you know, perhaps new products and services can be provided using such data. So these are the things that we're looking for when we build a smart district, and these are things that we're looking for when we build PDD. And of course, like I mentioned, we can't do this ourselves, and so we actually uh, have limited capacity. So what we as a government agency are doing, we are reaching out to the private sector partners to build some of these components. Uh, ST Engineering, uh, who Rohit will be uh, sharing more about later, we are actually working with them to create the open digital platform and conceptualize it, develop it, and deploy it. Uh, we are also working with uh, SP Group. SP is actually Singapore Power, 
they are the main operator of the national electricity grid. We are working with them to build uh, a smart grid uh, in Singapore. So we do collaborate with them and we are actually looking for more collaborations in the future for different, uh, more specific aspects of the smart city development. And PDD is actually not just the uh, only smart district that JDC will be doing. There are other smart districts that we're looking at. For example, the Jurong Innovation District, uh, which is uh, slated to be completed sometime uh, around the same time, 2023. Uh, we are also hoping to use this technology developed to go back into brownfield developments. For example, One North, how do we then uh, upsmart using the same, or uh, using this new technology to upsmart the, the operation experience and the workplace play and learn experience in these other districts as well. So we are hoping to build a platform that allows us to do this for both future and uh, existing buildings. And just to share, uh, GDC's exciting projects uh, in the future, and not just Hongbo, which I shared was focused on cybersecurity and uh, ICT, but uh, Jurong Innovation District I mentioned, is actually focusing on uh, attracting companies that are in the industry for portfolio and advanced manufacturing space. Uh, lastly, Jurong Lake District, this is actually uh, a collaboration project between uh, the Urban Redevelopment Agency of Singapore, as well as uh, JDC, our HQ is actually in this location. Um, but the whole government is actually looking to, to create it and transform it into a second central business district. So these are some of the new exciting uh, smart district opportunities in Singapore that JDC has a, 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 a small hand in. PDD and JID, we are the master developer, but Jurong Lake District, you know, we're just sort of like a supporting agency. And uh, I have attached two videos here. Uh, I don't think I'll, I'll play it over, over Zoom, but uh, the links are out there. The left video is actually kind of like a marketing video. It shows you the kind of uh, experience that JDC would envision in the future PDD when it's ready in 2023, 2024. And the right side is the open digital platform. Uh, it's a demo video that actually showcases the capabilities of this platform and how it would improve both JDC's operational experience and the user experience of the people who use it. So I think that's the end of my presentation. Just a very high level overview of uh, PDD. Yeah, thanks. Back okay, Sammy. thank you, Ihan. Thank you, very, very, very impressive. And I see that there is already a lot of uh, questions coming in to Ihan on, on the chat. So we let you to digest a little bit this and, and uh, we will come back to these questions then during the Q&A. Um, next, we're gonna hand over the microphone to, to Wohit. So, uh, like I said, Rohit Gupta is a VP of Marketing and SD Engineering, and he will share more details about the SD Engineering Citizen Smart City Solutions, and also he will touch base the uh, 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 Open Digital Platform, what Dihan also uh, discussed, which really kind of like operates as a digital backbone of the, of the whole PDD. So, uh, with that note, Dihan, please, over to you. Ah, sorry, Rohit. Thank you, Sami. Um, before I start, I just want to express uh, my thanks to uh, Nordic Innovation House and uh, Business Within, uh, particularly Marcus, for giving us this opportunity to share about ST Engineering and our smart city solutions. I also want to express my gratitude to JDC for being a very wonderful strategic partner in our endeavor to develop this open digital platform for PDD. I think uh, we signed an MOU with them uh, almost two years ago in July 2018. And I'm uh, quite happy to say that we've made tremendous progress uh, together so far. So my presentation today is structured into uh, three parts. I will start off with an introduction to ST Engineering, followed by a brief walkthrough of some of our smart city solutions. And uh, finally share a few things about the ODP and its role in uh, PDD. So ST Engineering is a large uh, global technology and defense company headquartered in Singapore. It is 51% uh, held by Temasek, which is the sovereign wealth fund in Singapore and has close to 22,000 employees uh, globally. Uh, we started off mainly as a defense uh, supplier to the Ministry of Defense in Singapore. And over the years, we have diversified from the defense technology into the commercial uh, business area. So today we operate across uh, four different sectors. The first one is aerospace, which is one of the largest sectors uh, that we have. And this focuses mainly on aircraft, 
uh, MRO, maintenance, repair, overall operations. We also do a bit of passenger to freighter conversions. And uh, some of the world's largest companies like FedEx and uh, DHL are our key customers in this uh, segment. The second largest sector that we have is electronics. And uh, electronics really focuses on uh, smart city solutions uh, in the area of smart environment, mobility, uh, transportation solutions, IoT, and, and the likes. Uh, land systems is the third sector, which is focused largely on uh, defense products uh, for the armed forces, as well as on the homeland security applications. And in the area of robotics, uh, particularly autonomous robotics uh, for autonomous vehicles, as well as logistics applications. And the last sector is marine, which is focused on shipbuilding and ship repair, uh, largely on the defense segment. Uh, but we also have a small business unit there that focuses on environmental engineering, where we do uh, things like desalination plants, uh, and we're building one of them for Singapore now. In terms of revenue, we are close to $8 billion in terms of annual revenue. And as you can see, um, even though we started off as a defense uh, company, today about 70% of our business comes from the commercial uh, segment. And a large part of this commercial business is focused on smart city uh, operations, apart, of course, from the aerospace and the marine sectors here. Uh, we are still largely uh, an Asian company, as we are headquartered in Singapore and uh, more than 50% of our revenue today comes from Asia. Uh, we do have a significant presence in Europe and, and US, and we are looking to expand our operations in uh, both of these places. Uh, so we would be happy to partner with any of the companies uh, that are interested uh, to bring our products there uh, and vice versa. Uh, before I move on to my second part, I also understand that a lot of companies here are SMEs and uh, startups who might be looking to raise funds uh, in the future. So I thought it would be appropriate for me to highlight that we also have a corporate uh, venture capital arm. Um, this was established in 2017, and it has a fund size of US dollar, 150 million. Uh, typically, we invest in C to Series B uh, funding, and um, we are more like a strategic long-term investor um, because um, the company that we invest in uh, must really align with our uh, core areas. And we look to actually provide them with our expertise and help them bring their products to market much faster uh, by being a strategic long-term investor. So if there are any companies here that are looking for funding, um, I'd be happy to connect with them offline and also through this program uh, as we go along. Okay, so that brings me to the second part of my presentation, uh, City Sense. CitySense is actually our smart city solution suite, uh, and there is many different underlying products. Um, and these products find applications in uh, many industries, uh, ranging from industrial parks, um, they could be business parks like PDD, or airports, uh, transportation sector, including both uh, road as well as uh, rail transportation, uh, logistics industries, as well as uh, maritime industries for port automation. We have um, many different brands underlying uh, for these products, uh, the most common ones being Agile and Strobo, as highlighted here. And uh, to give you an example of some of the products that we offer, um, we offer things like smart street lights, uh, smart car parking solutions, uh, whereby uh, number plates can be automatically recognized and uh, account-based charging can be done. We have facial recognition based uh, or biometric based access control solutions. We do have IoT platforms uh, that enable all of these systems to work together. We also develop uh, autonomous buses. Um, uh, we have been trialing them in Singapore, uh, one of them even in uh, JTC facilities in Jurong Island. We have autonomous logistics robots. We have automatic fare collection systems, uh, smart traffic junctions, intelligent uh, transport solutions, etc. Uh, the list is quite long, and I think I would refer you to my company website uh, to identify more. Um, interestingly, I think uh, because of the COVID-19 situation, uh, we've seen a lot of demand for many of these products uh, as companies try to adjust to this new normal. 
particularly the ones that uh, enable contactless transactions. So I just want to highlight that we have actually completed uh, more than 500 smart city projects uh, in 70 cities uh, because we have been developing these solutions for quite a fair bit now. And um, one of the common theme across all of these uh, products is that we have the ability to actually create integrated operations center. Uh, this is largely because we come from a defense background and uh, we are able to connect uh, disparate systems that you see in any industry, whether it's um, transportation or airports or marine, um, et cetera, to give a centralized uh, picture um, and help um, the operators uh, run um, uh, seamless and efficient operation. Of course, these are protected by our cybersecurity products as well. So I'll just deep dive into some of these uh, products uh, to give you a glimpse and then move on to the ODP uh, part. Well, uh, within the Metro Rail system, uh, we have been uh, providing many products like a platform screen door. Uh, when any of you enter into the uh, MRT systems in Singapore or any other parts of the world, uh, like Beijing, Metro, uh, the platform screen door that segregates the platform from the train um, is provided by us. Uh, we do have contactless automatic fare collection systems, uh, again, utilized at many of the uh, Metro Rail projects uh, globally. We have passenger information systems, and of course, we have uh, command and control systems for uh, Metro Rail. In terms of the road transportation segment, um, we have urban traffic management solutions um, spanning across um, more than 5,000 kilometers of roads today. In Singapore, particularly, we have been developing this for a long time and deploying it. Uh, we have also recently deployed these in uh, cities like Abu Dhabi. We have uh, public transportation peak management systems, uh, driving simulators, etc. And on the autonomous vehicle side, as I just mentioned, uh, we have been trialing various configurations of buses. Um, in fact, one of the buses is based on a platform from one of the Nordic companies, uh, because the way we operate is we develop the autonomous capability, but the underlying uh, electric bus uh, is typically sourced through partners uh, in other countries. Uh, in the area of digital building solutions, which is more relevant in this discussion uh, with PDD and uh, ODP, uh, we do have um, solutions spanning across smart lighting, um, perimeter intrusion detection systems, uh, smart water meters, and IoT platforms, as well as uh, solutions to manage uh, the energy management system. And we have deployed uh, uh, many of these nodes uh, globally. And till date, we have deployed more than 15 million uh, wireless nodes, um, largely in the US, um, Singapore, India, as well as some of them in the Nordic countries. There's a glimpse of some of the other products that we have, uh, smart toilet management systems, uh, smart car park systems, smart locks. Uh, these are particularly useful for facility operators um, where you need to provide access to transient uh, operators. And you can then actually enable uh, locking and unlocking of a uh, normal padlock uh, using your Bluetooth on the smartphone devices. We also have products on the smart utility space uh, spanning across uh, water meters, uh, electricity meters, and uh, gas meters. Uh, they do work across uh, multiple wireless communication protocols, including uh, LoRa WAN, NB IoT, uh, 400 megahertz bands, etc. Um, and of course, many of these are future-proof and scalable, and uh, we are able to upgrade the firmware over the air for many of these products. We have uh, been developing uh, smart lampposts as well. Um, these are uh, lampposts with expandable modules on board, which could actually include many of the other features like advertising, uh, video monitoring, uh, temperature sensors, humidity sensors, uh, snow sensors, etc. We have recently won a project with the government of Singapore for smart lamp posts in Singapore. We also showcased some of these in Hong Kong, um, as well as with the United States uh, Council of Mayors exhibition last year in Honolulu. Uh, we have deployed some of these. So with that, um, I will move on to the uh, last part of my presentation, which is the open digital platform. Um, 
I just want to share with you how this all uh, started. Uh, Yehan has already provided you a brief background about this ODP. Uh, but essentially, three years ago, uh, JTC visited us, um, and we were having a discussion between uh, our, our various managements. And we showcased many of our smart city products uh, to them. And uh, JTC looked at us, and they said, well, that's wonderful. But you know what? Uh, there's no dearth of suppliers for these kind of uh, systems like robots or facial recognition systems, etc. And you see them all across the world with uh, various startups, uh, SMEs, MNCs. Uh, but the challenge today is that these systems are all running in, in silos. So, for example, um, if I want to deploy a cleaning robot uh, in one of my facilities, the cleaning robot needs to be able to talk to my lift uh, systems or to my uh, doors in order to move uh, seamlessly in the premises. And that requires a lot of integration efforts in terms of talking uh, to the lift vendor, ensuring the safety is not compromised, etc. Uh, and the interesting part is once you do that, next time a delivery robot comes in and you want to deploy that, you have to do that entire round of discussion and technical integration once again. And so on and so forth when you start employing more and more robots. <laughs> that makes the whole system very complex. Similarly, um, in terms of CCTV cameras, um, in fact, one of the real estate providers was sharing this with us uh, recently. Um, there are too many CCTV cameras all around, and if you want to implement a facial recognition based access control, you need to implement another round of cameras to enable that access. So the question is, can we actually use the existing cameras uh, to also enable access? And uh, that gave birth to this idea of coming up with a digital platform that allows all of these silo systems uh, to talk to one another, that allows uh, technology companies to come in and deploy their solutions by simply plugging and uh, playing them into the system, right? uh, just like we do in the IT world today. And at the same time, because you have many of these systems uh, running in an estate, uh, today the estate operators uh, lack a uh, full situational picture and they lack the ability to control many of these elements uh, from their command center. Um, many estates have made progress, uh, JDC is one of them, and we are able to see the situation today, but we are not able to do a real-time control of these devices uh, from the estate operation center. And of course, as Yehan pointed out, uh, there is an inability to test some of the new devices um, when they are plugged into the system. And hence, uh, there is also a need for having a digital twin where you can test your new IoT systems, uh, test the impact on the overall user experience before actually deploying them uh, into the estate. So that gave uh, rise to this uh, partnership. And uh, almost two years ago, we did sign an MOU uh, with these objectives in mind. And uh, of course, uh, one of the outcomes of uh, developing and deploying the ODP uh, would be to reduce the cost of operations of running an estate by using uh, analytics that can allow us to reduce the energy footprint, as well as to provide a seamless uh, and enhanced uh, user experience um, to the users of the estate. So this is just an overview of um, the ODP architecture. Uh, if you see, uh, the ODP is in a way um, uh, agnostic to the IT infrastructure and is able to run via a cloud-based IT infrastructure system, which is shown here, or also based on on-premise uh, IT infrastructure. It does have five core elements in the core service platform, uh, starting with the IoT platform uh, that we have, as well as the ability to have video analytics and data analytics, and our ops and a C2 uh, module, and a module for security and identity management, where you are able to authenticate uh, devices, uh, people, and authorize them before they are connected onto the platform in order to safeguard uh, from a security perspective. And of course, there is an integration platform that allows seamless exchange of this data with uh, the various vertical subsystems, as, as we call them, uh, in the estate. And these vertical subsystems, um, there can be many of them. Uh, the list here is just a brief example of uh, what could be there, including cut Crop our guidance, uh, smart lamp post, uh, building management system, robots, etc. All in all, put together, uh, we are expecting about 500,000 data points uh, to be connected to the ODP, including things like uh, 
mystic cooling systems, uh, fire protection systems, or pneumatic waste collection systems, as well as uh, new technologies that might come by as long as they comply to the uh, data exchange protocols. And of course, on the top of it, uh, we have all the various stakeholders and the users who could actually uh, benefit from this open digital platform uh, through various apps um, um, available to them on their desktops and uh, tablets. So just uh, to share a few use cases, uh, sometimes um, I get a feedback that ODP is a bit abstract and very difficult for people to understand um, from a layman perspective. Uh, we have uh, listed down about 100 plus use cases uh, that could benefit from the ODP and how it can enhance uh, the user experience. Uh, so I'm just going to share two use cases here. Uh, one of them is a use case where you are able to access uh, PDD using a barrierless uh, system. As you walk in, you are able to get recognized uh, from a uh, distance. Probably all also measure your temperature now, given the COVID-19 situation, and grant access into the face. Um, the lift then actually takes you to the floor automatically by combining all the tenants that are uh, on the same floor. And you get access to your own office unit or office space, again, seamlessly using uh, facial recognition. And uh, you could even take it a step forward and uh, allow the room settings to be automatically adjusted for lighting and aircon or any other devices um, for your own comfort. Another use case um, that could be implemented is in the event uh, there is a situation where a child or an elderly person uh, with dementia is, is lost. Uh, you could notify that to the nearest uh, the service desk. And uh, as long as you have a photo of uh, the person that has been lost, um, you could upload that into the system. And using video analytics and the uh, security cameras that are all around, you could actually track the person quickly and uh, ensure that relevant health, uh, which is a person in time, in order to help them reunite um, with, the, with the family. So these are just some of the examples um, that I've given here. And um, I think that brings me to the end of my presentation. I am happy to have more Q&A um, uh, and hand over to Sammy now. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Roy. Very, very uh, impressive. Um, if you can hand over me back the, uh, the screen, so then I'll, I'll share it from here. Very good. So we still have a, like a roughly half an hour for the for the Q and A, and we already got a lot of uh, messages coming in our chat, which is which is great. And uh, and let's so let's start. I guess we can start with uh, Yihan with you. There was uh, quite a lot of questions regarding the uh, the platform, some regarding the digital twin, but uh, maybe we start from the top line and then we start going going. Down from there. So, who is developing this platform, and how do you ensure that uh, different vendor solutions are compatible with the overall platform? And then there was also kind of like a question regarding that. It was more related, like where you are in terms of platform development, and, and is there still are there still doors open for the uh, potential uh, platform developers? Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, who is developing this platform? Uh, ST Engineering. Uh, Rohit, uh, as Rohit has shared, they are our lead uh, partner doing all the system integration work and the development of all the, the system and the subsystems as well. Uh, in the second part of the question, you said, how do you ensure different vendor solutions are compatible? So what we uh, have done is actually, uh, JTC has worked with uh, GovTech. GovTech is actually the government technology agency of Singapore. We have worked with them to develop what we call a set of uh, integration requirements or integration standards uh, for building systems that JDC would need to uh, for you to come in and integrate with the uh, ODP. So when JDC then goes out to buy all these different uh, building systems like lifts or, or escalators or air conditioning, uh, we ask the vendor uh, during the tender process to say that you must comply with all these different integration requirements before uh, you can accept your bid. So this is how JDC uh, as a whole, we are trying to 
to uh, align all the building systems together. And uh, the standard is actually, I think the requirements is at a very, very high level uh, and, and they are meant to encompass all the different types of systems available. Uh, generally, the building systems that JDC would want to procure as a landlord. And uh, this is how we ensure interoperability. Uh, yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, anything you want to add, uh, Rohit, from the uh, ST engineering uh, point of view? Yep. Um, I just want to add this is actually a very common uh, question that we often get. Uh, the Open Digital Platform is being developed together with uh, JDC as well as GovTech, which is, like he had pointed out, uh, the government technology agency. And uh, by the very term open, right, uh, we, we want to allow all sorts of vendors uh, to connect to the ODP. Uh, there is no limitation that only ST engineering products can connect to the ODP. Uh, we intend to make it open uh, for everybody to connect to it. Uh, by open, of course, we don't mean that anybody can just plug and pay. There would be some level of um, authentication and authorization required in order to connect to it. Uh, but as long as you comply to the standard protocols that uh, GovTech is developing, uh, you would be able to benefit uh, from the ODP. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, let's take one question regarding the digital twin, uh, and then we can go for the specific. There are, there are a lot of uh, good questions coming in, which is great. Uh, so, regarding digital twin, so will open uh, BMI standards be used as a part of the digital twin of the buildings and then the overall infrastructure? Yeah, so, so I guess I can answer that. Um, yeah. I'm not sure how familiar uh, the companies here are with the Singapore construction industry, but basically uh, the building, con building Construction Authority of Singapore, BCA, has actually mandated that all building submissions uh, now include a, uh, a beam submission as well. So this will allow the authorities to, to, to have a copy of all the buildings, all the new buildings in Singapore, uh, a copy of the BIM. And JTC internally, what we're using is actually, uh, I know there's a push for open B, uh, and actually we have some vendors who use IFC, uh, but internally we do have a preference for, for Revit and RBT. Uh, but this is not just JTC as well. We realize that in the Singapore um, construction industry as a whole, there is a preference for Revit uh, over uh, IFC because uh, I understand, I'm not that technical in the beam, uh, knowledge, but I understand there are some uh, data, data accuracy issues with IFC that, that we are still trying to work out with the different stakeholders. But uh, we do accept IFC as a, as, a, as a valid format for some of our buildings, but mostly we are going with Revit. I, I hope that, that, that answers your question. And also we are using that Revit uh, as the basis of our, um, our 3D model and hence as a basis for our digital twin as well. Okay, good. Thank you, Yihan. Um, and then maybe we go back to PDD because that seems to be the, uh, the, the hot topic today, uh, which is not a surprise. So uh, we have a question from Jimmy that all, uh, all the data collected in the PDD will be stored. Will JTC build and manage this data storage facility and will that be uh, PPDA compatible? So yeah, the answer, the short answer is yes. Um, we are using a combination of uh, on-premise data centers as well as uh, cloud storage solutions to uh, manage this data. And actually, uh, JTC as a government agency, we do have a private government uh, cloud uh, capability that actually we're leveraging on in order to store this and analyze this data in the cloud. And of course, yes, uh, uh, Singapore has uh, PDPA uh, regulations and we are complying uh, with that. So when previously we shared about sharing of the data in terms of sharing data or building systems and all that. Uh, uh, under PDPA, we need to anonymize it so that, that no personal data or no personal identifiable data is, is actually shared uh, with all your startups and, and academics. We'll actually be anonymizing all of them. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Ian. Uh, let's then take a next question, which is more related to the processes and, and how then uh, foreign and, and in this case, also like Nordic companies could be able to connect to the needs of the PDD. So what are the processes? Uh, how then the foreign company, foreign technology providers would be able to connect uh, with you? 
sorry, is this a, is this for me or? Uh, well, Ihan, you can perhaps start and share share the uh, the processes uh, from the JTC side. So just to be clear, uh, the question is uh, I, I didn't so, quite catch the question. Yeah. So the question is like, what are the processes for foreign technology providers to connect to the needs uh, of the PDD? So how how do they connect to the yes. PDD system? Yeah. Uh, well, I, maybe the. ST engineering team can go to the technical stater, but basically we are looking at uh, high level API connections uh, uh, between different systems that uh, will be exposed to our system. And of course, each of these API systems will be uh, 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 have security and access controls uh, related to it. Uh, but of course, with, uh, in relation to more on-premise building systems like lifts or, or lighting, smart lighting systems, uh, from a very, uh, Simple cost perspective. Actually, we think uh, hard wiring is 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 uh, a game and probably the most economical solution. Yeah, I'm not sure that that answers the question. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that this was more kind of like what is the process of, of finding those business opportunities? Oh, the, oh, how do you find the business yeah. opportunities? So to if connect? the companies wants to deliver some solution for the uh, PDD or then the uh, yeah. So what what's the process on that? <laughs> Well, I guess you can reach out to me or and my my colleague Ryan, who is in this call as well. Okay. Uh, we are we are always open to uh, uh, find new ideas and new solution providers to answer some of our problem statements. Uh, of course, not just like PDD, but of course we have, as you can see, we have many other properties yeah. uh, across different ages, some thirty to twenty years old or even future ones. I think that we don't. I wouldn't say JC has a formal process to solicit all these ideas. Uh, we, 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 we take it as we go. Yeah. yeah. All right. And obviously our program, what we're doing now in collaboration with, with you is a good, good way to kind of like uh, get your solutions uh, in, in front of you and then uh, start having those conversations. Um, let's go then to the smart waste uh, area. Uh, so this is from uh, Harkon from ABUX. Any ideas on the smart waste handling, how that is, is a plan to execute and manage? Smart, okay. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, your context of smart waste is, but uh, from PDD perspective, um, there, there, there are probably two things that we're doing. Number one is of course the uh, uh, sorting waste uh, at the source. So uh, Singapore's uh, Singapore's recycling policy is to split uh, waste into, uh, I think right now it's three different uh, large waste groups. Number one is general waste. Uh, number two is uh, what we call uh, uh, mixed recyclables. For example, things like uh, uh, waste plastic, paper, metals, uh, clothing, they are generally sorted into, into one category. And the last one is actually uh, newly introduced by the Singapore government the food waste. So we are inviting restaurants and uh, even uh, households to separate the food waste uh, from, from other waste. So I think in Nordic countries, your know, recycling is more advanced than us, but this is for Singapore, uh, what we're doing right now. And so, so the user or the person who throws the waste would sort this at source. This is not the smart part. This is just making sure that the people's behavior ensures that it is split. Um, the smartness then comes in the collection uh, uh, part of it or how you can treat the waste at source instead of bringing it away from PD to another processing plant. So, so one thing we are looking at is uh, maybe perhaps uh, there could be the use of robots to collect waste from the different waste collection points throughout PDD. PDD is actually, uh, as you know, it's 50 hectares. So uh, in order to save manpower, we are exploring the use of robots to, to do this. Uh, number two, we are looking at on-site uh, uh, waste to energy systems. So, you know, because you incur, as a building owner, we incur costs by having the waste moved away to, to a far-flung uh, waste uh, treatment facility. One of the things we're looking at is how do you then use a, 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 uh, a on, on-site system, uh, perhaps in the basement, so that there's no smell, that there's, there's no uh, unsightliness, put the waste in and use it to generate electricity uh, for use again on-site. So that's part of the smart grid. Uh, a conversation that JDC is having as well. Uh, that is probably the extent of, of smartness that, that we are looking at right now. But of course, I think if any of these companies have other solutions, we, we'd be happy to hear them when we do further in-depth discussions. 
Okay, very good. So different kind of ways to value uh, solutions are, are also welcome. Good. Uh, I go back to the previous question and then uh, ask that from uh, uh, from ST engineering team. But like, who would be the right person from your team to connect uh, for those companies who wants to provide some complementary technology solution? Yeah. Uh, so in terms of complementary solutions, uh, you can always uh, reach out to me and I can connect uh, you to the right people. Uh, but I just want to add on, there are multiple uh, avenues uh, to participate in PDD. Uh, right now we are in the development phase, uh, whereby JTC as the building owner is the one who is throwing out tenders or probably has thrown out tenders for some of them. Um, and you could participate in those tenders to uh, provide your solutions and services. Uh, many of the smart building elements obviously need to connect uh, to the ODP. So there is some level of uh, coordination and cooperation required. Uh, once the PDD is, um, is open to the public, I think there are also other avenues that will open up to provide uh, new technology solutions, uh, services. Uh, it could be in the retail business. It could be from the academia. It could be from other areas where they want to come up with innovative ideas. And that's where you could also uh, tap into the power of the ODP. Uh, of course, outside of uh, the PDD and ODP, uh, if there are other areas of collaboration or investments uh, where you're looking to speak to ST engineering, uh, you can reach out to me. Okay, thank you, Roy. Um, good, I think we had one question regarding the, uh, uh, the data. So are there any kind of plans that how we utilize this data for have shared that with, uh, with the academic uh, researchers uh, in order to like uh, get better collaboration out of it. I'm not sure is this Yehan, would you be a better person to answer that or this one? So how do we plan to share the data? Yeah, any um, plans okay. to encourage the academic collaboration by providing the open data for researchers? Yeah, so so I, I think we are looking at, at, at stakeholders who can better improve um, the experience in PDD. I think that's the key into how we identify uh, our our partners that we will share data with. And the other one is, of course, if um, the data can be used to create a, a effective new solution, uh, whether it's a service or a product, a new solution for people in PDD or Singapore. I think that's also one of the the, the more more higher priority partners that that we are looking for. Um, JTC has in other projects shared data uh, with with uh, researchers and companies. But I would say that it probably, it will not be on, uh, it has not been on the same level as how we plan to do it in PDD because uh, in the past, it's just doing data dumps, right? We have one year of data, we just throw everything to you. Uh, you help us figure out what's best. Uh, but I think moving forward, we're trying to give live data to researchers and all that. So that ongoing, you know, if there's a trend or something, then, then, then partners or, or researchers can come in to, to help us. Uh, to look at it. And of course, I think if there, there is data that, that JDC is not giving from day one, but you think it could be useful, then of course, I think feel free to reach out to us and we can have a further discussion on, on what specific data sets would help you or your company and of course help JDC as well. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, then we had one question regarding the, uh, the interface with other cloud service providers um, are open to interface with other cloud providers. Uh, ST Engineering, do you want to take this one? <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, could you just uh, repeat the question? Is that a technical? Uh... The question was like, uh, uh, are you open to interface with the other cloud uh, providers? Right. So I think uh, this question is in relation to the underlying uh, ICT infrastructure on which ODP will, will be based. And uh, we are definitely use, uh, planning to use uh, commercial uh, cloud service providers as well as uh, others. In PDD itself, uh, of course, it is designed and decided by JDC. Um, it's a mix of uh, cloud-based as well as on-premise. But for other deployments of other smart districts, um, we could actually take the ODP and uh, deploy it on other uh, commercial cloud providers. It depends on the project at hand. 
I, I think maybe the question was was in response to to my comment that that we have a government um, uh, cloud service, but I, I'm uh, I think to allay your concerns, uh, we are actually very compatible with the, the major cloud service providers like Azure, uh, Amazon, and, and and Google. So yeah, definitely it's, it's compatible. Okay. Uh, then we had a question from Mona regarding the uh, this is more kind of like IoT related. But uh, the question is, have you mobilized any thoughts around the communication between the different services? Uh, yes, as part of the ODP architecture, uh, there is an ability to uh, to talk between the different systems. I think if the question is more from a technical perspective in terms of what the technical architecture is is uh, for the system okay. to allow them to talk to each other, uh, then I would uh, uh, I would like to call upon my colleague Ul here who might be able to answer this question. Ul, are you there? Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Or? Yes. It's a little bit soft, okay. so. Okay, I try to speak up. Yeah. yeah no, so, so I think what, what we're looking at, at is when, when JTC is kind of acquiring the different subsystems in the state, I mean, they're looking at uh, a certain interface principles that we will try to interface with. But we also, in the platform, trying to build in a way of, of uh, putting in adapters so that we can kind of hook up based on various standards, especially in the building industry, there, there are many different protocols that we can connect to, right? So we're looking at both kind of trying to get people to follow a common standard, but also be flexible to connect to some of the kind of historical interface standards that exist in the, in the building industry. Yeah. I think maybe I mentioned another thing also, which had not been mentioned here, and that is that we're hoping to kind of, as a part of the the state create a living lab also. And that means that we will, we will kind of create a compartment within the state where we can publish data a bit more freely so that uh, you can, anyone kind of even a tenant within the state could subscribe to the data coming from the underlying platform and maybe create an other smartness that may happen at kind of within the individual tenant units level and not kind of directly under the control of JTC, but we're hoping to make the whole platform open to this level, but then to open up to that level and not expose too much of security uh, threats or uh, create security threats. We're looking at whether we will have kind of a, a living lab compartment that is sitting somewhere in between so that data will flow into a, a less uh, strictly controlled area and therefore we can actually publish this data. So as a part of this program, we're looking very seriously at all kinds of cybersecurity aspects. So, so we have the, the cybersecurity authorities of Singapore also reviewing how we are building up this platform. And apart from the PDPA that was mentioned before, we're also looking at at the overall cybersecurity very seriously. Yeah, thanks. Good, good. Thanks, thanks, Dave. And uh, then there was one more, I would say more kind of like a generic question, but like, uh, is there kind of, obviously like uh, PDD is a multi-year project aiming to, to complete uh, 2023, 2024, and also there's multiple phases, but is there kind of a clear list of problem statements, for example, what JTC and S2 engineering is having at the moment, or is it more kind of like you, once you see something interesting, then you will uh, consider the possibility to implement that? Maybe you have I think for, Yeah, from a JDC perspective, it's, it's definitely dynamic, but I think I, uh, if it fulfills, you know, in my slide, the, any of the four outcomes, you know, helping JDC to operate efficiently, improving the experience of, of, of uh, people who work, live, play, and learn in PDD, uh, encouraging this uh, collaboration, and uh, of course, uh, contributing to more sustainable measures. I think uh, any of these ideas along the way 
that we see, uh, we'd be quite uh, interested in it. And uh, we will look into how to incorporate it into our brain development. Um, I, I wouldn't say that to fix this are problem statements, but, but those are our ongoing challenges and we will always look to, to solutions that can help improve upon these, these are key outcomes. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Ian. How about Rohit on the ST engineering side? Yeah, uh, definitely. I think uh, we started off um, with a list of problem statements that were given to us uh, by JDC. And um, obviously our current architecture is based on those uh, problem statements. Uh, but we are more than open to have more problem statements come in uh, so that the ODP can address some of these future challenges. And even once it is deployed, we obviously do expect uh, to keep on having newer versions to come in to um, adjust to the changing demands of, of the landscape, of the well, business estate. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Rohit. Um, seems like we've been answering most of the questions what we have had here in the chat. Uh, and, and like I said earlier, also there have been some questions regarding how to connect, what's the best way to find more, more information. Like I said, this session today is, is really about uh, introductions. So helping to understand our Nordic audience, of like what is the big picture, who are the players, what kind of solutions roughly they are they're looking for, uh, and what kind of uh, platforms there, there will be. And uh, further we go, we start going deeper, we bring in other stakeholders as well, we will hear different uh, needs from their side and uh, and then everything will be basically culminating then to our program then in, in october where like marcus mentioned earlier today is that like our first week will be focusing on, on having those group sessions so then all the program participants are able to to present for the uh, for the main stakeholders and after that we we, we uh, break uh, companies uh, into one-to-one -one sessions then with them uh, with those stakeholders who wants to engage with them on more deeper level so so that's a very, very efficient uh, and good way to, to, to start building your, your foundations here in Singapore and, and engage it. And that's a good time then to have those uh, good one-to-one uh, -one, uh, conversations and go really, really deep. Good. Uh, let me just double check if we have any additional questions here. I think that we covered most of that. And, and, and like I said, all the uh, today's events, materials, the decks, the contact details, you know, will be shared then with, uh, with the participants uh, in 24 hours. So uh, you, can, you can expect that to land in your inbox to, uh, tomorrow. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much everything from my side. Anything last, last words, uh, Jihan or, or Rohit? for our great Nordic audience. Nope. Yeah, I'd just like to thank everybody for uh, spending time with us today. I am hoping to interact with them uh, more directly after this session. Thank you. Very good, very good. So big thank you for Ihan and Rohit and, and both uh, also for the whole ST engineering team who we have here today. And thanks for all of our uh, participants from the Nordics and also from the Singapore. And hopefully this session has provided you better understanding about the, the PDD, also kind of like what kind of solutions JTC, ST engineering is looking for. Uh, we really look forward to seeing most of you in our next stakeholder uh, introduction session. Uh, so stay tuned, we will uh, release the details as soon as those are locked. And of course, we hope to see uh, as many of you as possible in, in our program in, in October. Thanks again, everybody, and uh, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.